I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Some face-offs are easier than others. You've likely seen us tackle plenty of original versus remakes where one of the titles didn't stand a chance, but it's always a fun exercise regardless. On occasion, we do like to challenge ourselves with a real doozy of a matchup, one where no clear winner is obvious right from the jump. This is one of those episodes as we look at two brilliant films from one of the greatest directors to ever step behind the camera, Martin Scorsese. The films in question, that's easy, 1990's Goodfellas versus 1995's Casino, both classics in the organized crime genre. Now, this might be an easy call for some, but not this guy. I love them both almost equally, so this is going to be a pretty close call. So let's make sure to keep stirring the sauce and have your shine box handy because this is going to be one violent face off. No actual science was used to determine the outcome of face off. Your results may vary. Please do not consume face off if you are allergic to conjecture, opinion, or general nonsense. Round one story. Goodfellas and Casino are based on non-fiction books written by Nicholas Pileggi, who in turn wrote the screenplays for both with Scorsese. Of course, some artistic liberties are taken with some stories embellished and a few violent crimes added for dramatic effect, but both of these true stories are truly compelling on their own. Goodfellas focuses on Henry Hill, the son of an Irish immigrant who grew up admiring gangsters and eventually became one himself. At a very early age, Henry ran errands for the family, worked his way up the food chain, and ultimately became a trusted associate who specialized in hijackings and robberies. Despite having a pretty good run in the business, the beginning of the end for Henry comes as he gets heavily involved in the drug business, a no-no for the crime family back then. His own addiction to the white stuff would lead to his downfall, and Henry would go on to become one of the most famous or infamous rats in the colorful history of organized crime. Similarly, Casino centers on a crime syndicate, although now the down and dirty streets of New York City are replaced by the gaudy bright lights of Las Vegas. The focus here is on Sam Ace Rothstein, who is inspired by Frank Lefty Rosenthal, a bookmaking expert and casino owner for the Chicago mob. Ace is joined in Vegas by childhood friend Nikki Santoro, who was based on notorious gangster Anthony Spilotro. Though good friends, tensions quickly arise between the two as Nikki's violent temperament and tendency to play outside the rules puts the future of the casino in jeopardy, something of a problem when your bosses are a very large crime family. Ace's life is further complicated by the arrival of Ginger, a Vegas showgirl and hustler whose thirst for the good life as well as copious amounts of drugs and alcohol send all of their lives spiraling out of control. Both stories feature a staggering amount of details in factoids, and Scorsese and Pileggi lay them out with expert precision and depict larger-than-life characters who, despite their moral shortcomings, are utterly fascinating to watch. It's fair to say you can't definitively state one saga is more interesting than the other, so we'll play it safe and call this one a draw. Now, before we continue, we'd like to thank you for watching Face Off. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes live. But now, back to the show. Round two, leading man, Henry Hill versus Sam Rothstein. It's a no-brainer that any film dealing with the mob is going to feature some unsavory characters, those who might even be pretty tough to like or be invested in, but both Goodfellas and Casino give us protagonists who, while far from perfect, are at least easier to root for than some of their associates. These main characters are treated with serious respect by the actors and make for compelling leads, especially with such a large array of entertaining wise guys. Ray Liotta plays Henry Hill as an amiable crook with a penchant for the good life. The actor wasn't exactly a household name at the time, but Scorsese's knack for casting was once again spot on. With a nice guy's smile and a con man's ability to say the right thing at the right time, Liotta sells Henry's charm while fully capable of showing us the dark side hiding just underneath the facade. As Henry's life takes a turn for the worst in the film's third act, Leota's extremely effective performance, all fiery eyes and palpable anxiety, convinces us 
that there's going to be no climbing out of the dangerous pit he's dug himself. It's a powerful performance that set the stage for Leota's ensuing career, and Henry emerges as one of the more memorable wise guys in cinematic history. Closely associated with Martin Scorsese at this point for almost 20 years, Robert De Niro was a natural to play serious-minded gambling expert Sam Rothstein in Casino. A less showy role than Jimmy the Gent in Goodfellas, Rothstein is a level-headed individual who wants to run his casino as a legitimate business. Well, legitimate within reason, anyway. Throw him out in the alley and just tell the cops you got hit by a car. While previous Scorsese collaborations saw De Niro portraying frequently unhinged violent men, his Rothstein is the straight man in a vivid ensemble of wily and conniving characters. It's not nearly the most memorable De Niro performance, although it's certainly a sturdy one, but when compared with Ray Liotta's high-energy turn as Henry Hill, it's not necessarily strong enough to come out on top. Verdict? Good fellas. Now take me to jail. Round three, Joe Pesci. It goes without saying that neither of these films would be as effective as they are without the presence of Joe Pesci, who handily plays two of the most terrifying little guys in cinema. Far from the lovably inept wet bandit in the first two Home Alone films, Pesci's Tommy DeVito and Nicky Santoro are hot-tempered, unpredictable sociopaths. Likeable enough guys when they're not beating or killing someone, sure, but that cheery smile can turn upside down real quick if you're dumb enough to say the wrong thing around them. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Motherfucking hey, mutt! Tommy, you, Tommy, you Tommy, fucking Tommy, piece of shit! We hadn't seen a gangster quite like Tommy DeVito before, Goodfellas, at least not since the glory days of James Cagney. Tommy makes an immediate impression in what may be the film's most famous scene where he effortlessly tortures his pal Henry by forcing him into a minute of unbearable tension. What'd you say? You're right. Funny how? What? Just, you know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. It sets the tone for Tommy, who we now know can go from funny guy to remorseless killer in the blink of an eye. His thin skin sets the stage for two iconic movie rebels with Billy Bats and Spider, and it's that careless appetite for violence that, uh, spoiler alert, ends his gangster career for good. Pesci's performance is genius, making Tommy one of the most entertaining bad guys to ever grace the screen. Obviously, Pesci was a no-brainer to play Nicky Santoro, the diminutive Midwestern gangster who aims to take over Las Vegas. Frequently hyperactive and prone to bouts of angry bloodletting, the similarities between Nicky and Tommy are easy enough to see, although it's unfair to say Pesci's turning in the same performance twice. Where the fuck you get off talking to people about me behind my back going over my head? Nicky isn't quite as jovial as Tommy during the best of times. His sinister intentions are rarely masked. Of course, he's an intimidating figure, and Pesci ensures he's always entertaining, but Tommy DeVito is an iconic monster of a mobster and a deservedly nab Pesci an Oscar for best supporting actor to boot, meaning he's just too tall a figure to knock down, no pun intended. Verdict, good fellas. I don't want to get blood on your floor. Round four, leading ladies. While both good fellas and casino are mainly populated by well, fellas, there are two very captivating female leads in the mix. Good fellas introduced many of us to Lorraine Bracco, who plays Henry Hill's girlfriend and eventual wife, Karen. Once introduced, Karen becomes a major player in the film, telling the audience her thoughts on Henry and his friends while giving us something of an outsider's perspective on all the legal doings she gradually learns about. Initially, Karen is willing to look the other way, but the lifestyle that Henry finds so intoxicating soon smothers her as well. Brocko's live wire performance is perfectly modulated, hopping between cool indifference to hysteria to fear and everything in between. An Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress was very well deserved. Casino's leading lady is a much less sympathetic variety. Sharon Stone plays Ginger, a beloved call girl and hustler who specializes in getting everything she wants from the many high rollers in town. Once she learns Sam Rothstein is infatuated with her, she sees her big meal ticket, even though her allegiances are less to him than to her own all-consuming greed. Try as she might to play the good wife, Ginger's reliance on drugs and booze, and not to mention her one-time pimp boyfriend, Lester Diamond, played by 
by the terrifically sleazy James Woods overwhelm any hope she has to maintain a picture-perfect life. At this point, Sharon Stone was still best known for her cunning turn and basic instinct, so her impassioned and go-for-broke performance here was definitely an eye-opener. It's worth noting she received an Oscar nomination for the role. She's not exactly a likable character, but then again, there aren't many of those to be found in Casino. If nothing else, we can feel her desperation very strongly as her dreary fate looms ever closer. Due to both performances being so forceful, we're gonna have to settle for a draw here. Thank you, very nice. I told you I was hot tonight. Round five, violence. If you lay down with the dogs, you can expect to wake up with fleas. I like this one. The dog, one dog goes one way and the other dog goes the other way. So it goes to show that if you hang out with gangsters, you can expect to see them kill and be killed. Both Goodfellas and Casino have their fair share of whackings, some more brutal than others. In Goodfellas, we of course have Tommy DeVito to thank for the film's bloodiest and most disturbing moments. There's the gruesome takedown of Billy Bats, whose big mouth gets him a big stomping, stabbing, and shooting. The brief saga of Spider might be the film's defining scene, the moment where you know these aren't such good fellas. After all, then we see sleepy Sam Jackson get a rude wake up call and that pain in the ass Maury take a nice pick to the brain. Again, all courtesy of Tommy who experiences a bloody end of his own when it's all said and done. Again, spoiler alert, not to be outdone and about 30 minutes longer, Casino ups the gore factor in a fairly significant way. If you've ever wanted to see someone's head crushed in a vice, well, you're in luck, although it's not a pretty sight. A pen meets a neck in a nasty fashion, John Wick style. A cheater's hand is given a pounding and a whole slew of guys are giving their walking papers in a dramatic third act montage. But surely the standout sequence is the brutal demise of Nicky Santoro and his brother Dominic who are beaten nearly to death and buried alive. Makes a bullet to the back of the head seem almost quaint by comparison. While each film has its scenes of cringe-inducing bodily harm, it's Casino that wins this round for its particular brand of nastiness. The verdict, Casino. Round six, humor. Just as much as violence is a calling card in a Scorsese mob movie, so is a very active, sometimes grim, sense of humor. Oh, hey, Henry, Henry, here's an arm. Very funny, guys. Here's a leg. It's a wing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like, the leg or the wing, Henry? Both movies are surprisingly funny with plenty of memorable one-liners and moments of unexpected levity, like when we're introduced to Henry's colorful crew. And Jimmy Two Times, who got that nickname because he said everything twice, like... I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. <laughs> or Tommy attempting to get Henry to go on a double date with him. Anyway, she won't go out with me alone. Unless her girlfriend comes with us, I figure you come along and go out with her girlfriend. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You knew what? See what? What the fuck is wrong with that? And who can forget that lovely late night dinner with Tommy's dear mother? R.I.P. Mama Scorsese. Goodfellas has such a high spirited energy throughout that it actually plays more like a comedy than it does a drama. And it can certainly be considered one of the most endlessly quotable movies of all time. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. Of course, Casino similarly finds excellent tonal balance between drama and comedy with a heavy lean towards the latter in the early going. Plenty of those moments come, you guessed it, courtesy of Joe Pesci's Nicky, who finds humor in the little things in life. But it doesn't hurt to have someone like Don Rickles in your movie to lighten the mood either. Both films take dark turns in their third acts, which we'll get to in a minute, but before everything goes to hell, it's a pretty amusing ride with these murderous crooks, an unapologetic lover of both both, this round is just too close to call. Verdict, raw. You're a funny guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it, Henry. Hey, no, no, That's it, on, Henry. Round seven, third act, finale. As with most stories involving real-life criminals, the chickens must come home to roost sooner or later, and in both Goodfellas and Casino, we see how quickly the good times can go bad. The turning point in Goodfellas is Tommy's death, which leads directly to Henry's further involvement with the drug business, his fractured relationship with the rest of his crew. Now I gotta turn my back. 
and his eventual unraveling. In a true tour de force, Scorsese puts us right inside Hill's frantic mind as he tries to do a million things at once, all while paranoia builds steadily within him. After he's busted, everything happens real fast for Henry, who doesn't much mind ratting on his friends as long as he doesn't have to do hard time. And he also doesn't want to go to any place cold, just FYI. You, you meant whenever you move me, I asked you once, and I'm going to tell you again, I don't want to go any place that's cold. The quick fall of Henry and Karen Hill is depicted as isolating and scary, and any glamour we might have been attracted to early on evaporates when the reality of this lifestyle becomes clear. On the other hand, Casino's third act is more or less focused on the twisted love triangle consisting of Ace, Ginger, and Nikki, with those good times ending before they even really got started. Sam and Ginger's relationship becomes completely toxic, while Sam and Nikki's days of being good chums are likewise left in the dust. Once those relationships are severed, well, the mob and the feds come in to clean up the mess. It's a sobering finale, not unlike Goodfellas giving us a solid glimpse at just how grim this life can morph into when it all starts heading south. Plus, that soundtrack Marty and company compiled is just so thoroughly awesome. Casino's finale is highlighted by that epic murder montage and Nikki's cruel execution, but Goodfellas' stunning third act is just cinematic catnip done by a director at the height of his many powers. While it's very close to being a draw, we're gonna have to give the edge to Henry Hill and those pesky helicopters. Verdict? Good fellas. Get the fuck out of here. What are you, nuts? I'm telling you. And with that, the final verdict deems good fellas the victor. Marty sure knows how to make a mob epic, and both these productions are ceaselessly entertaining and expertly crafted, but we've got to give the edge to Goodfellas, as it's undeniably one of the best movies ever. Don't worry, we're not going to feed you to the lions. If you disagree, maybe 